Hey guys, real quick before we get into today's video, I want to thank our video sponsor, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an online school offering programs and courses specific to the firearm industry. If you want to learn about subjects like gunsmithing, shooting, sports management, firearm repair, and many others for the sake of just having the knowledge or making a career out of it, SDI is certainly something you guys should take a look at. They even have several different funding options available as well if that's something you guys are interested in. But I'll be sure to put a link in the description to Sonoran Desert Institute so you guys feel free to check them out and kind of get started in your journey that way. But again, kind of exciting to think you guys can make a career out of the subject. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get on to today's video. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. Not long ago, I made a video shooting some armor. Uh, that was pretty addicting, kind of wanted to shoot some more armor. So Safe Vest actually sent out some armor, but to keep it different from the last one, interesting thing with this is this is a soft armor vest, not a plate carrier plus hard armor, nothing like that. And the cost, the price of this is actually the big thing. This can be had for about $280. So we're gonna see what could stop. Uh, we've got quite an array of guns uh, back there. So we're gonna start small and work up. You guys know the drill on YouTube, so uh, what the heck? We're just gonna put this actually on a steel silhouette that's freshly painted. So whenever we hear the steel ping, we're gonna come back here and inspect it, kind of see what's going on. But let's go ahead and put this on here for now. Oh wow, that looks perfect actually. All right, we're not gonna go for headshots. All right, I'll tell y'all what, uh, you guys have probably seen plenty of me doing these kind of videos, so let's check it up. Cameraman Ian's gonna be doing most of the shooting on this one. Look at that face, you guys miss him? All right, so hold on now. We got a uh, Smith & Wesson, you're eager. This is a Smith & Wesson Performance Center SW22 Victory with a uh, Venom from, or no, Viper from Vortex. All right, rack and tack. You hit it? I think. All right, let's <laughs> check it out. No, we're gonna have to go way bigger. All right. All right, moving up to nine millimeter. This is a Springfield Armory XDM Elite OSP. This is the Venom Red Dot sight with a rugged obsidian 45, nine mil. Ian, rack it and give it a whirl. Go center mass here. That was quiet. That center, it kind of sounded like a thump on uh, metal. All right, let's just lift this up real quick. Nada. Looking inside here, nice and flush. All right, slip it back on. All right, moving up, 45 ACP next. Good opportunity to thank our sponsor, ETS, or Elite Tactical Systems. Gonna be using them for some speed loading. For example, I could grab four rounds, especially when it's box ammo, it makes it really easy. And uh, just load it up. Pretty darn simple. All right, this is the Smith & Wesson Performance Center, 1911, SW 1911 with the lightning cuts and all that jazz. Love this thing. The only thing was the blacked out sights, but excess sights sent over a tritium with a white surrounding, so the contrast is pretty awesome. Haven't shot it like that yet, but Ian's gonna tell me what he thinks. Sounded kind of thumpy. All right, let's see. Yep, center mass again. Right there, take a peek. Definitely nothing going through. Yeah, not even worth taking it off yet. All right, uh, let's try 10 millimeter. All right, this is the CMMG Banshee Mark 10. It's a uh, pistol in 10 millimeter. LaRue trigger, EOTech EX, uh, PS2 dash, whatever. Anyway, here you go, Ian. 10 millimeter, that's a longer barrel. I think it's a eight inch barrel. So uh, more velocity and the potency of a 10 millimeter. So who knows? All right, it didn't sound like a definitive steel hit. So let's see. Anything on there? Nothing poking through. Not actually even feeling like a, uh, a poke. I don't like any warping or anything. Just say the word bulge. That's a demo ranch thing. All right, eight inch barrel carbine type pistol, 10 millimeter, pretty potent and uh, no problem. So uh, I don't know what's uh, what's next. I think probably 357. You don't want to become demo ranch? No, he's too small. All right, moving up to uh, 357 Magnum. That's a Smith & Wesson 686 plus, And that is one Ian. Let's see how they go. Ooh, that kind of sounded uh, acoustic. Nothing going through, for sure. All right, 44 Magnum. All right, Ian said his wrist is hurting from the 357 Magnum, so uh, I'll take over from here. Uh, 44 Magnum, I'm just joking. Um, Stealth Hunter, uh, Smith & Wesson, 629. Oh boy, Let's see if I can uh, hit my mark while doing this. Whew. All right, yeah, let's check that out. All right, let's see if anything's marked here. How about that? All right, $280 so far, stopping everything from 44 Magnum and nothing here. Nothing even cracked at all. It's pretty impressive. 
Very impressive, actually. Should I also mention this thing does not weigh a lot, so. Ah, all right, pretty sweet. Thankfully, now that's reasonable, 44 Magnum, but thankfully uh, we brought some pretty excessive stuff. All right, that's a 50 AE loaded up into a Black Tiger Desert Eagle. Uh, Ian's wrist has recovered, so let's do it. Center mass on this one. I got hit right in the face from that brass. All right, $280 armor. I think the, I think the 50 AE might have been the end of it. Uh, and sure enough, yep, that ripped right through. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it is. That ripped pretty well through. This thing is rated uh, for everything, well, not specifically, but from our experience, the 50AE will go right through it, but up to 44 Magnum and an eight inch barrel, 10 millimeter, $280 armor, pretty lightweight stuff. I'm actually pretty impressed. Just because we have it, I'm just curious what the 500 Magnum will do. Just compared to that, we'll try to go a little higher. Um, maybe right about here. Let's see what 500 Magnum will do, just because we have it. Somewhere in that wheel is a, I think it was a 400 grain uh, underwood ammo for the 500 Magnum from Smith & Wesson. Yeah, that sounded like a hit. Just to compare 50 on 50. That, uh, that looks like it had more energy just the way that spread out, but let's take a look. Oh yeah, all right, I remember. 50 AE, 500 Magnum. Both went right through, but uh, yeah, the energy of a 500, just silly. This side is fresh, and I'm telling you right now, any rifle will graze through it, but just so we could see the effect of it. This is a... Uh, Retro BRN 16 from the Retro series from Brownells, M16 look, chambered up with uh, whatever was in Ian's range bag, some kind of a 223. But either way, again, with soft armor, um, it should rip right through, but on a fresh piece of it, just so we could kind of see what it does, go for it. That sounds like a rip through uh, to me, but let's check it out. So it looked like uh, not only did it go through, but once it kind of hit the steel, it just fragged out all kinds of ways, but that's okay. This was never rated for rifles. Now 280 bucks, let's just recap. Uh, 22, nine mil, 45, 10 millimeter from an eight inch barrel, 357, 44, uh, without even ripping the other side. All right, so the armor did as much as I thought it would and a little bit more, but uh, Ian thought it would be fun to destroy it with a 7.62 by 54R, three shots, and uh, that it did. But anyway, sent it off with, uh, with a couple shots of that. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Ian, for being so kind to shoot it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching and uh, catch you guys next time. Take care.